gentlewoman from Washington seek recognition? Mr. Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number three, printed in Part B of House Report Number 114-551, offered by Ms. Del Bene of Washington. Pursuant to House Resolution 720, the gentlewoman from Washington, Ms. Del Bene, and a member opposed to each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise today to offer a simple clarifying amendment to ensure that state local and tribal governments can develop and implement community-based programs that have demonstrated success in reducing recidivism and getting people the help that they need. I'm hopeful everyone in this chamber can support it. The growing epidemic of heroin use and prescription drug abuse is having a devastating effect on the health and safety of our families and our communities, both in my home state of Washington and across the country. The problem has become so severe that adults in the United States are now more likely to die from a drug overdose than a car accident. With more than 120 deaths occurring from drug overdoses in this country every day, more than half of which are from prescription drugs, it's clearer than ever that Congress must take action. That's why I'm so pleased to see my colleagues on both sides of the aisle coming together to combat the epidemic of addiction. And this legislation represents an important first step. It authorizes much needed funding for the opioid re abuse reduction programs that will expand substance abuse prevention and intervention efforts, boost resources for law enforcement officers and first responders to administer overdose reversal drugs, improve substance abuse treatments for individuals in the criminal justice system, and help prevent the illegal distribution of opioids in our streets. Among the programs authorized under the bill are treatment alternative to incarceration programs, an important tool for law enforcement agencies in the fight against opi opioid abuse. My amendment simply clarifies that this provision includes a model with demonstrated success in Seattle and King County. First launched in 2011, the Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion Program, or LEAD, is a community-based pilot program that offers a helping hand rather than jail time for those suffering from substance abuse. And according to an initial study, it successfully reduces recidivism by as much as 60%. Other cities have taken notice with Santa Fe and Albany already working to implement the model in their communities. Instead of arresting and prosecuting low-level drug offenders, we should be supporting successful programs like LEAD that direct them to the community-based services and help that they need. My amendment will do just that. It will ensure resources are available to expand successful models that are already working and make a meaningful difference in addressing this crisis. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support it, and with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Reserves. Gentleman from Wisconsin is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to claim the time in opposition, although I am not opposed to the amendment. Objection. The gentleman from Wisconsin is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I thank the gentlelady from Washington for offering this amendment, and I support it. This amendment clarifies that grant monies authorized by H.R. 5046 can be used to fund community-based substance abuse diversion programs sponsored by law enforcement agencies. There are a variety of programs across the country administered by state and local law enforcement and prosecuting agencies that offer diversion to drug treatment and then other services as an alternative to incarceration. In my home state of Wisconsin, treatment alternatives and diversion, or TAD programs, offer offenders the opportunity to enter into voluntary substance abuse treatment, case management, and other risk reduction services as a safe alternative to jail or prison confinement. Diverting nonviolent offenders into substance abuse treatment uh, keeps them out of jail and correctional facilities thereby saving bed space and taxpayer dollars, as well as treating the underlying addiction that may have influenced the commission of a crime or may contribute to future criminal behavior. These are precisely the types of treatment alternatives to incarceration programs that I believe should be eligible for funding through this new Department of Justice grant. I thank the gentlelady from Washington for working with us on drafting the amendment and urge my colleagues to join me in support of it and reserve the balance of my time. Balance of time. The gentlelady from Washington is recognized. 
I'd like to yield the remainder of my time to Mr. Johnson from Georgia. Without objection, the gentleman from Georgia is recognized for two and a half minutes. And I thank the gentle lady. I rise in support of her amendment, and I also rise to uh, state my unyielding support for the underlying legislation introduced by my friend Jim Sensenbrenner from Wisconsin, uh, literally an institution of uh, statutory production in the halls of this Congress, and I appreciate him. Uh, this uh, Del Beni Amendment would enable states and local governments to use grant monies for treatment alternatives to incarceration programs, including community-based abuse diversion programs sponsored by a law enforcement agency. H.R. 5046 authorizes the Attorney General to make grants to state and local governments for the development, expansion, or implementation of opiate abuse treatment programs as an alternative to incarceration, and this amendment would expand el eligibility for such grants to community-based substance abuse diversion programs sponsored by a law enforcement agency. The cooperation and involvement of local law enforcement agencies is an important component of in any comprehensive effort to combat opiate abuse, and diversion programs can play a key role in improving outcomes and rehabilitating opiate drug offenders. Diversion programs also benefit law enforcement by conserving law enforcement resources, judicial and penal resources, while enabling police agencies and courts to focus on drug traffickers and other serious criminals. So based on those facts, I urge my colleagues to support this amendment, and with that, uh, I'll reserve the balance of the time. I, and I yield back the balance of our time. General Lee from Washington uh, yields back. Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time as well. All time having expired, the question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Washington State. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. And you pin the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. It is now in order to consider amendment number four, printed in part B of House Report 114-551. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I rise to, uh, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number four, printed in part B of House Report number 114-551, <clears throat> offer